Let's go. We got the V2 in a video with me, little baby and Dirk. That's actually so sick. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how they did all the effects on this video. You're gonna to wanna to stick around all the way to the end because the effect is super sick and I got all the sauce on how to do it. Also, does anyone remember the mirror intros? If you're an OG, you remember these intros. Not much has changed, honestly. The room's looking a little bit different, but let's get into the video. What's good? We're back in this thing today. I got the absolute sauce when it comes to doing this rip apart freeze frame transition. And I'd stay tuned all the way to the end because I got some techniques that I've never shared here before on how to use the V2 in Premiere Pro only. So if you're in Premiere Pro, this is the video for you. Also don't wanna to keep too much of your time in the intro, but I'm gonna be giving everyone that watches this video a discount code on the V2. So if you haven't already snagged it, it's a good time to do it. Use code MEEK at checkout for a little discount. Yeah, let's get into the video and break down this effect. All right, so now that we're in Premiere, I just wanna go ahead and show you the transition that was in the actual music video. And this is it right here, super fire. I like the way they did it, they had the paper rip apart. And then here's the transition that I came up with. It's pretty similar, but I did take some different techniques and a few different looks to make it a little bit more unique so stay tuned in the video to learn how to do all this like always if you want to follow along with the tutorial i'll have the project files linked below for all patreon supporters so if you're interested in that check that out so first off what you're going to want is just a few clips lined up together i have like about three-ish seconds of clips so hopefully that gives you kind of a gauge at how long you can have it you can have it ride longer or shorter, but that's just kind of what I thought looks good. So for the first thing we're gonna go over, and it's the most simple of all of the effects, you're just going to effects over here and typing in posterized time, and then dragging that onto your first clip. So depending on what frame rate you shot in, it'll say a number here. Most of the time it's probably gonna say 24 or 30. And then if you want to go ahead and make it kind of stuttery, kind of how the paper is, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in eight here. So basically it's taking that 24, dividing it by eight, which is gonna give you three. And now you can see when I go to our normal clip, if you go three frames forward, one, two, three, then it changes one, two, three, and it changes. So it's gonna hold a still image for three frames and then move on to the next frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that posterized time onto all of our clips here. That way, when we go ahead and now play it, it's gonna look a little jittery. And that's exactly what we're looking for because when we add those paper textures on top of it, it's gonna make it a lot easier to sell the effect. So next off, if you haven't already snagged the Ultimate Texture Bundle V2, go ahead and head over to my website, briandelmata.com. Check out, be sure to use that code MEEK for a little bit of a discount. And then you're gonna to wanna to go to the Rips and Folds folder and go ahead and drag in whatever rips you want. I'd suggest like, 10 to 20 probably, and then you can always add in more when you want, but I went ahead and imported a few already, so we don't really have to worry about that. And then to go ahead and get started on the paper effect, go ahead and drag in one of those assets and then go three frames to the right, so one, two, three, and then drag it out. And then go ahead and drag in your next one, one, two, three, and drag it out, one, two, three, and drag it out. And then just go ahead and repeat that all the way to the end. I'd leave like 10 to 15 frames at the end for that rip effect. But for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and add all these in so you guys don't have to watch me do the same process over and again, but just be sure to drag in the paper texture and then go three frames to the right and then the next one. And then once you go ahead and line all these up, you can see I have it stop here right before the transition, like 10 to 15 frames out. I think I did like right around 12. That's where we're gonna have it rip apart, but let's go ahead and do this first part real quick and we can touch on how to rip it apart in a second. So then when you have that, you can see all you see is the paper textures, obviously not what we want here. You wanna see the footage behind it. So then go ahead and highlight all of these paper textures and then go to scale to frame size just so they fit in the frame. And then you can see now we have the paper textures and you can see the video playing a little bit behind it. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and highlight all of them, then go to nest. Then you can name this whatever. I'm just gonna name this papers. And then let's go ahead and click on that nested sequence, go to the blending mode and turn that to screen. And then you're instantly gonna be able to see the clips playing behind it with the paper texture on it. And then all I'm gonna do is just scale it up a little bit so it completely fills out the video clip where you can't see the edges. And then once we render that out, you can see if you did it properly, the photo or the paper ripping should match when the clips change. As you can see here, this is vertical here, the paper texture is vertical. And then as soon as that clip changes to the next one, there is a horizontal. So it's going with the flow of the video. Next, I'm gonna to touch on a technique where I have this paper kind of, you can see this frame is growing. It just gives a little animation to the video and I think it just makes it look overall a little bit better and it looks like the paper is stacking a little bit more. So let's go over how to do that. It's super simple and uh, let's get into it. So let's go ahead and find a frame where we want it to happen. Maybe this frame right here. So what you would do is you would just hold Alt on your keyboard and drag it up. And then let's go ahead and cut it so it starts right at this, that first frame and then go one, two, three. And that's where it should end. So then I'm gonna cut it there. Now you can see you just have the same clip playing over itself. And then all you have to do is go to this opacity area right here and click on the pen tool. And then just kind of match a line that's folded in the paper. 
and then just mask out wherever you want it to take place at. There we are. And then I'm gonna turn the feather down to zero, that way it has a harsh edge. And then all you have to do is keyframe the scale. And what I like to do is go like right at the beginning, keyframe it, and then go one frame forward. So it kind of like pops and it's not a smooth scale, but it's more so like a, it popping out. And then you can do anywhere from like 105 to 110. I mean, you can go as crazy as you want, but that's personally just what I think looks best. And then you can see it pops out and if you're looking here, it might actually go over the line. So all you have to do is also just keyframe the position at the beginning and then go that one frame to the right and then move that position to wherever lines up the best for your case. It doesn't matter if the lines in the video are not lined up, but just make sure that that white line has nothing showing behind it. And then if we go ahead and render that out, it's nothing crazy, but you can see it just adds a little bit extra of an element to your video and I think it helps it pop out. So you can go ahead and do that for any of these ones with the line, and it really does add a different dynamic to your video. And for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not gonna go ahead and do it throughout. As you can see here in the example that I played earlier, I have it go a handful of times throughout the video. You can see right here, pops out, also pops out over here. You can see the background moving, the right-hand side here. I just did it a bunch of times throughout to kind of add a little bit extra dynamic. But for the sake of tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and keep it at just this one because it is the same concept for all of these different frames. And then another technique that I did to kind of make it stand out and they did in the actual music video itself is just go ahead and duplicate that video clip. Again, kind of how we did last time, you can hold Alt and drag up. And then let's go three frames forward to kind of match that posterize. And then let's go ahead and scale it down to something like 25. Now we can see we have this video clip. If you drag it above the papers layer, you will now have a video clip without any paper texture and you can have it line up if you dip if you duplicate it again and then change y position here you can see we kind of have it lined up like this and you can do a bunch of different things and techniques when you're doing this you can have a move around let's go ahead and do the same exact thing again bring it to 25 and bring it to 25 and then i just like to copy the motion from that one to this one and from this one over here to that one. So if you just click on the clip before, now they're in the exact same spot and you can kind of reference that to move it down or whatever you want. So now I'm just changing just the Y position. So it's still in the same from the clip before, but it's just down lower now. And if you render that out, you can see it kind of moves down. And in the example that I did, I just had it start up here, go down to the bottom right, go up a little bit, go to the bottom left, and then go up and just kind of had it change sizes as well. So we can go ahead and change the sizes of one just to show you kind of what it looks like, but it is all the same concept. So let's go for three frames forward, one, two, three, cut it, go back and let's do like 40 instead of 25 this time. It's all gonna be depending on whatever you want, but now when we go ahead and apply it over here, you can see it kind of just jumps to a bigger frame. And when we render that out, it looks something like that. And again, this is just a technique or a concept you can do to have something look cool. I'm not gonna go ahead and do a full animation of all of these different frames, but basically I would just recommend keeping it kind of making sense. So if it starts off in the top, have it go down and then maybe bounce to the right over here. So you could even, for this one, for example, you could bring it over here and it would kind of make sense because it would be going from the top left over here. One thing you probably wouldn't wanna do and mess with the flow of is maybe have like bounce here, 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 like you just kind of bounce around in a sporadic way. I think it's good to kind of have a little bit of motion, but obviously you can do whatever you want. If the song's a little bit more hectic or whatever, go ahead and do that. But I think like that looks pretty good. And for the sake of tutorial, let's go ahead and call it there. And let's go to this rip apart effect that is done right here where it kind of rips side to side. I think that's a really, really good looking effect. And shout out to whoever edited this couldn't find who actually edited this video. They weren't credited anywhere. It said Meek Mill directed the video. But if I do go ahead and find the editor or you guys do because you guys are like detectives on Instagram and stuff, go ahead and let me know in the comments and I'll update the description with the proper editor and give him credit. And if we find him, go ahead and follow him. But yeah, let's go ahead and drag in another paper texture. For this one, we want one with a line down the center. That way we can go ahead and rip. So this one, this effect or this paper looks perfect for it. So let's go ahead and drag that on and then scale the frame. And then also go ahead and turn that to screen. And now we can see we have this piece of paper riding till this clip right here. And that's pretty much exactly what we want. All you have to do is now go to effects and type in crop. Now let's go ahead and drag that onto our clip here. 
And first we're just gonna animate the crop. And this is pretty simple. All you have to do is just go ahead and kind of choose where you want it to start. So let's go ahead and have it rip like this and then go ahead and turn that feather down and then drag on left, right, or any of these different options down here all the way to 100%. That way it's gonna mask it out. And let's do that pen tool again. And if you do go ahead and see it disappear like it just did here, you can go ahead and turn left to zero for right now while you're just making the masks. So kind of keep in mind where your other one was. So I'm just gonna do kind of exactly the opposite of what we did on the first one. And now you can see if you drag left all the way, it deletes these two right here. That's exactly what we want. And then let's go one, two, three frames, and then go ahead and chop that black rip file. That way you don't have to keyframe it, it just makes it a little bit easier. And then all you have to do is just drag along the crop a little bit more. Let's go ahead and drag it out to here, just keeping it along with that line. And then go to the mask two, do the exact same thing. Let's go ahead and line it up like this. I think it'll look good. And then one, two, three, split it, go to that mask one, drag it out to whatever you want. Let's go ahead and make it roughly here. And then go to that mask two and drag it past as well. Now we can see we're a little bit past halfway. One, two, three, cut it. And this is gonna be the last one. So let's go ahead and drag this pretty much to right here and then as well, the same thing down here. And if you're having a hard time figuring out and grabbing the edges, you can go down here to where it says fit and bring it to like something like 50%, just so you can kind of tweak it right now and you can go back to fit. And I noticed that we kind of did a bad job masking here. So I'm just gonna go back to mask two, drag that down so it has that edge cut out. And we kind of did the same thing for this frame as well. So I'm just gonna drag it down a little bit more. And we're almost there with the transition. We just kind of have to add these ripped edges to kind of sell the effect and as well maybe give it a different background. So to do that ripped on the edge, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just go into our rips and folds pack, find one of these ones with the rip edge, black rip 42 looks perfect actually for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that in and then drag this into our clip, go to scale the frame size and then go ahead and do effects controls, bring that pen tool in and then just kind of choose a little section that you want. So this is basically the edge, the rip of the edge here. So now we can see, I'm gonna make it kind of like a box. We can scale it to whatever we want, rotate it around roughly 180 degrees, and then go ahead and turn that mask feather to zero as well, so it's not any blurry or anything. And then just scale it up to whatever size you need for it to fit the piece of paper. And then you can also turn this to screen. It's just gonna blend it a little bit better. And let's scale it up just a little bit more. But then once you got it fitting, it is really easy to do. Let's go ahead and just duplicate this layer. You could go ahead, if you want another unique piece of paper and have it look different than this one, you could just go ahead and drag in another one. Let's actually go ahead and do that just so you can see what that looks like. And we're gonna drag in black rip 31, kind of with those same ripped edges. Go to scale to frame size, and then let's go ahead and choose a section of that ripped paper again, kind of how we did last time. And this is pretty simple for just being in Premiere. With a lot of my tutorials, I go into Photoshop just because I like how it looks a little bit more, but I figured let's go ahead and do it in Premiere Pro only. Honestly, it gives you a very similar look, so it's not that big of a deal even. And let's go ahead and scale this down so it fits the edge, just exactly how we did with the last one. And there we are, we have these ripped edges, and then we can just go ahead, highlight both of those, drag those over to the next frame, and just reline them up. You can go ahead and change these in between each of the frames. So if you want the rip to look a little bit different, you can go ahead and do that and just choose a different texture, exactly how we did in the other video. You can see here, we just have to change the rotation to line it up with the paper a little bit better here. And since it is really quick, it's only three frames at a time, it's not the biggest deal if you don't line it up perfectly. Obviously for your music video, you want it to look good. So go ahead and spend the time but for the tutorial, we can get away with doing something like this. It will still look good. So again, just going these three frames at a time and then one last alt, hold and drag over and then go to motion, bring this here. And when we go ahead and render this out, we can see what we got here. It rips apart. And this transition is looking really good, but the one thing I don't like about it in particular is that it has the same clip behind it. I want it to transition to a different clip. So to do that, let's go ahead and drag all these paper rips one frame up and duplicate this background layer. So now you can see, if we go ahead and solo that layer, the one that I duplicated is this layer with the paper rip with the crop. So we have two of those layers. If you go ahead and turn it on, you can see it gets a little bit brighter. And the only reason we're doing that is because we're actually going to go ahead and drag all of this up one layer now. So the video, all of the rips, the two of the exact same thing, and then the rips on the edges. So now everything, if we go ahead and turn back on these layers, should be there, but the paper's a little bit too bright. And to fix that and make the background disappear, 
we can go to effects, type in track matte key and drag that onto our video layer. And then if you go to effects controls tab, go to matte, and then you're just gonna wanna find the video layer of the bottom rip. So the layer that we have duplicated, the two layers, that's making it a little bit brighter. If you go ahead and turn off that bottom layer, you can see if it's the right layer. And that for us, that looks like video layer four. You can tell by V4. So go ahead, turn that back on, go to the track matte, and then go to the matte layer, and then go to video layer, and then that four that we were talking about earlier. So now you can see it got a lot less bright so that because there's not two of them now, and now this paper is ripping in half like this, and there's a black background behind. So all you have to do is go ahead and drag the clip that you want to transition to behind it. So now we can see we have a totally different clip behind it, and then it goes to that clip. And I think it's a really good transition and a good way to end the effect. So let's go ahead and render that out, show you kind of the final version. And then we have that transition. It's super fire, and you can actually go ahead and just duplicate all of these layers over to the next clip and do the exact same thing if you just posterize your video clip. So if you wanna repeat this throughout your music video, you can go ahead and do that and then maybe change a few things in the process. So then the only thing it's missing from the original transition is like a film burn that's kinda of going over it. And if you guys don't have any film burns already, you can go ahead, click the link in the description, go to Cinepacks and use the code below. You guys get $5 off, it supports the channel, and then just go ahead, turn it to screen. I'm gonna turn the opacity to something like 75 so it's not as intense and then render that out and it should give you a similar look. So now you can see we have these film burns going over, just adds a little bit extra dimension to the transition. And I think it looks really good. But yeah guys, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. If you made it all the way to the end, like always, I do appreciate you. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. If you wanted the Texture Pack V2 with a discount, go ahead and click the link in the description and use that code MEEK at checkout. Follow me on all social medias, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch. I try to stay as active as possible on all of those. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.